Hello, I'm Brett Knowles from PM Squared Consulting. This is a detailed walkthrough of translating Bow Valley's strategy into action. This is an overview of how we can make sure that the activities we're working on are critical to the college's success. The executive summary is as follows. We've previously developed a strategy map listing our strategic objectives and priorities. From that, we can do a number of analysis. One is check to see how well our processes support each of those strategic objectives. We can overlay our performance on that assessment to determine where the performance gaps are and opportunities. And we can represent that graphically to see exactly where the gaps are, either by strategic objective or by process. We can do a similar analysis on our projects to determine their alignment to the overall strategic performance gaps and determine the strategic return on resources to achieve these longer term strategic goals. So let's go into the detail. We have the strategy map and strategic priorities for the coming six months. We can take those and lift, list them down the left side of a spreadsheet. Now, our research at Harvard indicates that over 80% of strategies fail, and they fail not because they're not clever, but because they're not executed. In other words, the broken part is making sure that what we do lines up with the strategy. So we'll list what we do, our core processes, across the top of a spreadsheet and assess their impact. What is the impact of each process on the success of each strategic objective. And the net analysis looks a bit like this. Let's drill into this top left corner. So for the process, human capital management, we assessed what is its impact on our ability to achieve social success. And we gave it a score from one to five, where one is a minimal impact and five critical. And the team scored this as a one, and so we've shaded that a light gray color. So when we go and take a look at the total impact scoring, or what we call the ontology, it's scored black where there's a critical performance node. So the way we determine that is we multiply the weighting by the impact. So this cell is effectively worth 50 points, whereas the cell we initially looked at with a weighting of 1 and an impact of 1 had a score of 1. So those critical performance nodes are colored black. Now by identifying where those critical performance nodes are across the organization, it allows us to do several things. One is determine where we should find key process indicators. In other words, if I wanted to determine why we're uh, doing well at excellence in educational experience, I would pick indicators everywhere there's a black square, as that's the critical performance nodes. So for example, if we take a look at current indicators, we might use student numbers as an indicator for instructional delivery against excellence, and perhaps student satisfaction as an indicator of program development and institutional design. So we're taking the measures that you're familiar with and now putting them into context, or in some cases, perhaps identifying new key process indicators. So typically, we'd find the KPIs for the black squares first. Now, this also allows us to determine where it's critical that we have high performance levels, because obviously these black nodes, I have to perform better than say the light gray nodes or even the blank ones. And then finally, we can begin to get very clear about accountability. So for example, if I own the process of human capital management, I know that I need to be clear on accountability and perhaps have my best teams on these two black objectives. Now, if later on management changed the weighting and throttled this down from 10 to 3 and moved this up from 5 to 13, all of a sudden this would become a critical node. So it allows us to be aligned or agile in strategy execution. Now, my second most important pieces are obviously where the dark gray is, and then I've got other performance nodes in the light gray. 
So this allows me to begin to make decisions about not only my process and who needs to be assigned to what, but even horizontally to find out what are the natural cross-functional teams I should put together to achieve each of these strategic objectives. Now what we can also do is add up the strategy points by column and determine how many strategy points are at play by process or horizontally to see which are my supercritical strategic objectives. And again, this just allows us to be aligned in our priority setting. Now we can actually take this a step further and add KPIs or key performance indicators everywhere there's a grade off cell. And this is what we get when it was assessed and estimated by a cross-functional team. Again, we'll drill into a bit of detail. And the node that we looked at before with a weighting of one and an impact of one, they perceive that they're, they're performing five out of five. So they're meeting expectations. So it's green. So if we look across the ontology, you can see an example where we have an impact of five and a performance level of two, but it's green. Here we have the same score, impact of five, and a performance of two, but in this case it's red. And then finally we have another example where we have an impact of five and a performance of two, and it's yellow. Why would this be? Well, it turns out that if we have a weighting of two, a performance uh, that's quite low is acceptable. If the weighting is slightly higher, in this example of four, it turns yellow, and for a strategically important node, 25, a performance of two out of five is unacceptable and turns red. So this allows us to see the performance in strategic context. In other words, because it's a more important strategic objective, everything has to perform at a higher level in order to be successful. Now what we can also do is add it up add the scores up horizontally or even vertically. If we add them up horizontally, we can create a graph like this. So to help you understand it, the height of the bar represents the amount of process support we need to achieve this strategic objective. The blue part represents how well we're currently performing, you know, the green and the, the good part of the yellow we saw. And the gold part represents the gap between the current performance and what the strategy calls for. So by looking at this chart, we can determine where the largest gaps are and hence where we should be focusing our, our gap closing activities or projects. So we can actually just focus on those gaps and it becomes clear where we need to focus our attention for the next six months. Now we'll sort these by gap so that we can take a look at them later. Now we can also add that ontology up by column to see how the processes are performing. And we can again see what is the gap between the current performance, the purple part, and the gap, the silver part, to see the total performance. And again, it allows us to begin to make sure our process improvement projects are focused where they make the biggest difference. Now, of course, we're going to launch projects or initiatives to close those gaps. And this is a, a list of the top 20 or so projects currently under consideration at Bow Valley. And we can score them the same way. Again, we'll take a closer look. So for this particular project, the SIS implementation takes a lot of resources, but we can see which strategic objectives it will have an impact on. Again, five means it has a high impact, three middle of the road, two less so. And so this chart allows us to see the impact of each project and the number of resources it requires. Again, we can launch those projects in order to close these gold bars that we saw before. So we can take that chart and also add it up horizontally. And in this case, we'll chart those as red dots. In other words, if we add up all the projects out there, they have a relatively high impact on making all learning count an even higher impact on changing or challenging our thinking and a lower impact on shape the future of college. Now, if we combine these two charts, we see a remarkably good profile that these red dots 
representing project impact more or less follows the same curve as the gold bars. Now, I know they're not precise, but within the analysis, uh, the science of what we did, that's pretty darn close. We also have a bunch of unintended consequences. So, for example, as we're going uh, and dealing with these other projects, we're also changing how we think and therefore an unintended consequence of pushing this one slightly higher. And we think the same happens here in educational and invest in our people. So overall, this is an exceptional profile based on 3,000 clients that we've taken them through. We could also take a look at this by looking at the strategic return on investments. Remember, I showed you how much uh, resources were required, for example, for SIS. We can take a look at the strategic impact, how many strategy points they're helping us deal with, and the investment required. So, for example, uh, the highest impact is through the indigenization strategy and implementing it. So it has a high impact and a moderately acceptable ROI based on the resource it requires compared to other things like the SIS, which has a good impact, of course, but a very low return on resources because it's a huge and expensive project. Now, this allows us to better prioritize the projects that we work on and understand why we're doing what we're doing. Now, that said, some of these projects are mandatory. You have to do them for regulatory reasons. There's others that you just need to do to keep the lights on. And so the SIS implementation is one of those where if you don't do it, it'll be severe consequences going forward. And then we've got other ones which are just around improving processes. So again, the summary is this. We drafted a strategy map which allowed us to do some process analysis to determine things like organization design, selection of KPIs, role clarity, etc. We added our estimates of KPIs so that we had a view of where we had the biggest challenges in achieving our strategic success and also viewed those by processes so we could begin to focus on our right lean and Six Sigma projects. From there, we assessed our current portfolio projects to make sure they're aligned with those gaps and provided some visibility of the strategic return on resources. So that's a quick overview of what we've done to help get a detailed understanding of how we translate strategy into action at Bow Valley College.